mob wrecks police station for preventing the lynching of a blasphemer. This is where we are in Pakistan. On November 29th, a mob of violent Muslim protesters burned a police station, including four police posts in Peshawar, Northeast Pakistan. The mob demanded that a mentally unstable man who was accused of desecrating the Quran be handed to them for lynching. According to the print, local Jumiat Ulema e Islam Fazl, a Diobandi Sunni political party, initiated the protest. When the police officers refused their demands, they broke out into violence. A local police officer, Asif Khan, said no officers were hurt during the attack. However, they had to request troops to control the situation. He said uh, police officers did not use force to avoid hurting anyone in the crowd, but they had to flee after, quote, thousands of demonstrators attacked the police buildings. Reporter Zia or Rahman said, quote, mobs can kill anyone and torch any building or entire neighborhood merely on allegations or rumors of blasphemy. So this is so wild. The good news is that the police actually evacuated the man. They, they refused to hand over the man to the mob because they're like, we're, we're still investigating this accusation. Um, also, um, they actually evacuated him to a different city. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see footage of, um, the attack. It's crazy. Look at this. Can you hear the shouting? Yeah. This is an attack of a mob on a police station. The police. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. For, and for what? For like not for, for for the police preventing the lynching of a blasphemer who don't who they didn't even have evidence for him that he a man who was reportedly nonverbal wow wow like he can't, I don't he have can't words. Even, he's like mentally unsound like he can't even speak and they're going to lynch him in the middle of town unbelievable this is not real this is not the real world by the way who do you call when you're the police and you need help you call the military you call troops <laughs> yeah. they've had to do this numerous times before they had to call them I'm, if i'm yeah they had to call the military when there was an eight-year-old um hindu boy in pakistan who um like a mullah like yelled at him when he was inside a madrasa or a mosque and so the boy pissed his pants and then they were going to charge this kid with, he was the youngest person in Pakistan to be charged with blasphemy, which is an offense punishable by death, eight years old. And they were, I mean, it just got crazy and they had to call in the military to help calm the situation down. Eventually the charges got dropped against the boy after there was international condemnation. Um, but it's crazy. Um, Wait, Secular Rarity is saying, I think it is worth pointing out that Muhammad Hijab has said in his ideal vision, this is how, quote, a true Islamic state would work. There would be no need for state executions because the people would take it into their own hands. Are you serious? True. No, he said that against when he was talking to a posted prophet. Like when a oh posted my God, prophet asked him, right. like, a posted prophet Jesus said, like, Christ. what would happen to me? You're like, oh, there's no need for state. I, I would assume in an Islamic state, people would take care of it. Um, oh so my this God. Is what but, then, yeah. but then he also said that apostates, like, would just be like, exiled like it didn't make any sense he, but like, let's made let's let's, anyway. let's stick to the story i just want to yeah. um, um tell you that this is what you get when you keep giving it when the politicians and the army keep using these the islamist mob against each other or giving to them or trying to get voted in by just appeasing them you know what I mean? Like th this is this is this is what you eventually like. What do you think is going to happen, right? This is what you get when you have a country like guys. The Pakistan is unique, is because there is nothing but Islam as the as the foundation. You know what I mean? Like relative to other countries, like even like if when you think about Islamic countries that are have gone like too far, right? Well, I mean you, you all. Every any amount of Islam is too far, but like relative to the rest of them, right? Um, 
you think of like Saudi Arabia and Iran, right? Those are the two, the two biggest ones, right? I mean, I know Bangladesh as well, but let's like focus on theocracies, right? But even in Iran and, and Saudi Arabia, there are very strong competing cultures and history and ideas to Islamic ones, right? Like even in Saudi Arabia, the House of Saud doesn't <laughs> doesn't really like Wahhabism <laughs> that much, okay? Like they are they have been attempting multiple times to move away from Wahhabism. Like they've been like they feel like they've been chained on by it, right? And in Iran, like they you have like a you know um, thousands of years of history and culture and you know that is competing like in afghanistan or in iran you have like you have competing cultural um, sources of in, in, in influence both both internally and externally right but pakistan is what you get when there's when you have islam more and more in a vacuum like the the culture of pakistan is islam you know what i mean like this is why you come when you like pakistan used was the greater india and now you just sucked out everything that was um pre-islamic out of it more and more i mean i'm, I'm not saying the removal of it is what is 100 but it's closest than anywhere else okay and this is this is what you get when you have islam and nothing else okay um and this is the the politicians own doing they for, for, because the, the the these their crazy mob was so intimidating that beca they became such a powerful weapon against others and appeasing them and giving in to them was such a useful way of getting into power right so you just keep fed, feeding them more and more and more and now they're going to swallow your entire country if you keep letting them happen uh, keep, let, 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 keep letting this happen. This is very dangerous because I'm not saying I'm not saying Pakistan is going to become a failed state. Okay, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying even even if the chances go from half a percent to one percent, we're talking about the country with nuclear weapons. Okay, one percent chance of Pakistan becoming a failed state is extremely high. That's a very prob problematic percentage like other countries have like a one millionth of a percentage of a chance of becoming a, a failed state for pakistan a nuclear country having a half a percent chance of being a failed state is a really high possibility that the world should not accept this is really really dangerous but going you want to show something this is i just want this is so wild look at this this is a photo of the police station on fire from a distance. Like, look at all the smoke and the fire. Like, it's crazy. I think um, Katie has an interesting point. Pakistan was formed specifically to separate itself from its own history, though. Exactly. Very exactly. true. Exactly. Exactly. One thing else I want to mention. Imagine being a black, like a secularist um, or a minority in Pakistan when when the police is not safe from the mob like who like when the police has to call the military like you as a citizen you are not in a position to call the military okay you as a citizen the best you could get is to call the police but the police has to call the military okay like how much safety can you ever expect as a minority or as a secularist in pakistan when you when the people that are supposed to be protecting you need protection themselves like how stressful of a situation that is if you're a christian if you're a shia if you're a atheist and especially especially if you're an ahmadi above all things living in pakistan like holy crap this is like insane i mean oh my god so um because of a friend of mine, I've been learning more about what East Pakistan did during Bangladesh's fight for liberation and the just the ethnic genocide. And it's I've become so black pilled like on the idea of the project of Pakistan as a nation 
because states are also projects, right? It's something that it's continually maintained. There are certain ideals and like, yeah, we talk about like, if Pakistan is going to become a failed state, like I can, I, I find it very difficult to even conceptualize the project, project of, of Pakistan, Pakistan as a nation. I'm hearing myself. Um, uh, the pro why am I echoing? It's Are you hearing now. that? Okay. Um, the, like the, the, the project of Pakistan as a nation, I, I do not find anything about it that is worthwhile. There's not a single ideal that I think it embodies that is worthwhile. Like, and this, oh my God, for example, like India, I think has an amazing, um, idea and aspirations as a national prod project. There are values and aspirations in India and in within its constitution that are something I stand behind and I is of great value. Same thing with America. Obviously America has enacted horrific things that I mean we can't even touch the surface of it, right? But I still find our ideals to be something worth aspiring to, to be something worth working towards, to be something that we continually hold ourselves as a standard to and hoping that we fulfill it more and more, better and better each and every day. I can't say that about Pakistan. What is there worthwhile about preserving, about this project of a nation? And let me be yes. clear, when I say this, this has nothing to do with Pakistani people. I have... So many Pakistani friends, not to like pull except, that card. Except but, these ones. Well, yeah. Oh, don't don't you don't say I have Pakistani friends. That's not like a good way no. of saying <laughs> so I mean, take I'm that just trying to say I'm not I'm, what I'm trying to emphasize is I'm not talking about the people, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm don't use that line. That's like a nation very... state. Okay, okay. Um, do you want to see the mother of all what about isms? Yes. Let's read this one. Read this. <laughs> Oh, geez. Oh, it's Hindutva <laughs> Susanna again. Okay, so Hindutva Susanna is saying, um, most Pakistani's ancestors are once a calm Hindu. They have been converted to Abrahamic religions, and this is the end result. And you guys are supporting the conversion mafia with Al Jazeera and Reuters News? Bitch, what? So, so it's, just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just like classic hate for what about them. Like, because these people are doing the, the worst... Like it's getting so insane in Pakistan. Apparently, we can't bring attention to other people doing wrong things. Uh, and also, this person thinks like Reuters. Like these people are have lost it. They think like not only Al Jazeera is not like a. It's a. They think Reuters because every news outlet that basically accurately reports what's happening in India, these people think like it's just a propaganda outlet against India and Hindus, right? Um, that's 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 how far gone these people have gone. Um, but yeah, um, this is like has nothing to do with these other things that we bring up attention to. But apparently, we can't talk about them because Pakistan, okay? Because yeah. Pakistan has this. So even Susanna, think about it. Even when we actually do, if we didn't talk about the story in Pakistan, people were like, "Why are you talking about India and this and this is India?" But you're not talking about this happening in Pakistan, okay? But even when we do. Even when we actually have dedicated what we do most of the time, like most of our news for the past 15 years has been about Islam. We recently have been in the past two years of been opening in the door into covering India related stuff. OK, but even when you bring attention to the fact with, that we do cover all of this crazy stuff that happens in, I don't know, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, they're like, then why do you talk about India doing this and this like like? Guys, do you not see that we actually are reporting on this? Like, what? It's unbelievable. These people, these the standards that. What do you want us to do? Not talk about the crazy crap that is happening in India because Pakistan is worse. Like, what? What do you guys expect? Like, you're insane. Anyways, um, yeah. I think it's really funny. Me. Everyone in the live chat is like, tr they're they're like, this account is satire, though, right? Like, this has to be no, satire. No, we. I thought that this was one of my friends who was trolling me, and then I realized, no, no this is just an actual Hindu. <laughs> okay, okay, guys. Because there, like, there's the stuff that they would send was so bad. I thought it was one of someone yeah, yeah. I knew pretending to be on, <laughs> saying the dumb shit a Hindu supporter would say. And then after time, I was like, oh no, this is real. 
Yeah, it was it was we thought so too for a, for a very long time we were enjoying it because it was so bad that it was like this cannot be not be satire. This is actually um, a very good point from Blank Name. Oh, oh, sorry. Let me bring it back. I wanted to this one. So Blank Name is saying I think they focus on Islam because people feel helpless and they can't imagine a better future, so they escape reality using religion. It's partially that, but it is also politicians in the governing class actively using Islam as a nationalizing force to cover up the fact that they are failing as, to govern, failing to provide for their citizens. So they galvanize behind Islam but to say, this is something you can be proud of because we don't actually provide you things, provide you quality of life that, that we can be proud of. So we're going to just cover up with this. This is why Islam has gotten so much into the sports in Pakistan, because sports are used as a nationalizing, um, galvanizing force as well. Katie is saying, my grandparents were in Bangladesh during the war. Oh, my God. I've heard so many horrifying stories from, from when they were kids during the war. Mm. It's, yeah, it, the level of barbarity and violence that was enacted on what is now Bangladesh is something that I can't believe I didn't know about until this year. Um, uh, here. Uh, India as a civilization was great. India as a modern republic, no way. It's just a socialist version of the USSR. Pakistan as a country is largely centered around the Punjab, as is their want. Punjabis in both Pakistan and India have fluid identity, which can be molded into anything. Unlike on others, Punjabis as a race are just a few centuries old. I don't, okay. I don't know what I don't know what you're referring to, but um, India. India as a republic does have a lot of problems. I mean, the the failure to India have a strong like, central government is part of it, but the British. It's are not also black and white, guys. India, India, India as it is today is by far way way you know light years ahead of Pakistan, right? Like, yeah. come on, guys. Like we will we criticize India here a lot. Okay, the the government, the RSS the Hindu, hindutva the bgp we criticize them a lot okay um and we will continue to do so okay but it's not it's not even remotely close they're like they're moving the gap is getting smaller and smaller but it's still huge okay it's pakistan is by f far so much worse than india so much worse than india and again i'm not saying like you know i mean if the if the if the hindutva had their way it would be much more like Pakistan and you know they're you know but again it's still the gap is still very very big um I would stand behind that any day of the week any yeah, day yeah, of the yeah. week it's not even a competition yeah not even close not even close and also here's the thing that maybe some Hindus some Hindus would appreciate I think the extremism uh, among Hindutva is been modeled after um islam islamism yeah so like if i i actually do blame the the radicalism among hindus in india on the impact that islamism has had on them their influence and they're, they're competing with their, their methodology, right? Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.